Cells divide and replicate through a process called mitosis. Mitosis. When cells reproduce themselves, they duplicate and divide into exact copies of one another. Mitosis occurs in phases, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and over here to the left, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And this, the result of mitosis is two identical daughter cells. Let's talk about the first phase, interphase. Interphase is the longest phase. It takes the longest amount of time to occur. Interphase here. Certain events occur in interphase. Recall these strands, these very thin strands of chromatin. Chromatin with an I-N at the end. These strands. These strands of chromatin are your DNA. Your DNA, this is your genetic makeup. This is the genetic coding inside your cells that makes you, you. During interphase, these strands, these loose strands, tiny thin strands of chromatin replicate. They make copies of themselves. Identical exact copies of one another. Another thing that occurs during interphase you notice this centrioles. These are called centrioles up top here on the left. They begin to move apart from one another in this direction. They begin to separate, let's say. The centrioles are located in a place called the centrosome. And during interphase, they begin to move apart, they, they separate. Something else to notice about interphase is that the membrane surrounding the nucleolus is intact. It's still there. Let's move on to the second phase of mitosis called prophase. Prophase. During prophase, the strands of chromatin, remember the strands? These strands here on the left, inside. The strands of chromatin that have already, what? Duplicated themselves. What they do, and they did that during interphase, what they do during prophase is these strands start to shorten and condense and coil up like this. When these strands coil up, they attach in the center at a place called the centromere. The centromere. Makes sense? They're in the center. Very important, this little place called the centromere. Let's review. These strands here are strands of chromatin with an I-N at the end. When they coil up, they're called, let's back up for a sec. When they coil up, they're called chromosome. So chromatin, This is a strand of chromatin over here to the left. This is a chromosome. 
and this is also a chromosome. When the strand coils up and condenses, look over here to the left, it's called a chromosome. A chromosome. Now, when the chromosomes attach at the what? The centromere, over here to the left, the centromere. It's called the centromere. Then these are no longer called chromosomes. I'm going to erase them. When they attach at the centromere, they are now called sister chromatid. Sister chromatid, look over here. Chromatid with an ID. So we went from chromatin coiled up to become a chromosome and now a chromatid. And here's the catch. Once they attach at the centromere, this whole unit is now called a chromosome. So first the strands, they were called chromatin. Then they coiled up and each was called a chromosome. Then they attached at the center mirror and they're no longer chromosomes. The whole unit's called a chromosome now. And each of the coiled strands now is called a sister chromatid. So this coiling up occurs in prophase. Some other things occur in prophase. Well, you can see how the chromatin up here, up top during interphase, coiled. Now look at the chromosomes. Here they are in prophase. They've coiled up and they formed chromosomes here. Each of these is a chromosome. You see they were scattered about here into tiny little fibers and now they're coiled up inside the nucleolus into chromosomes. Notice what's starting to happen to the membrane of the nucleolus. It's starting to break apart. Look at that during prophase. See how it's separating here? And the last thing that continues to occur or starts to occur is the centrioles. Remember we talked about the centrioles here, right here and here. Look how they're beginning to separate even further. They're starting to migrate away from the centrosome here. Remember they were just chilling out here in the centrosome? Now they're starting to migrate, migrate away towards opposite sides of the nucleus. The next phase is metaphase. Metaphase. What happens during metaphase, if you'll notice, is that the centrioles have from prophase have completely migrated to opposite sides of the cell. Here they are here, centriole, and another centriole here. Notice what else has occurred. These little spindles called spindle fibers have sort of branching off from the centrioles. And notice what else. The chromosomes, which were formerly these chromatin, and then they coiled up in prophase, look where they are now. They are now lined up in the exact center of the cell, or the nucleus, the nucleus of the cell. And what happens now, the chromosomes line up, they've already paired, created exact copies of, of themselves, and they have a sister chromatid on the left, 
and a sister chromatid on the right. So let's take another look at that. There are sister chromatid on the left and the right. Here's the centromere. Another sister chromatid on the left and the right, and there's your centromere. Sister chromatid on the left and right, and there's your centromere. So one chromosome, two chromosome, three chromosome, four chromosome. And you can see how the spindles reach out. The spindles have reached out to the centromere of each chromosome. Here's the centriole again. Centriole is right here. The spindles, fibers, have reached out and attached to the centromere of the chromosome. In actuality, there are not four chromosomes in the cell. One, two, three, four. There are actually, look to the right, 46 chromosomes lined up in the middle of a human cell. I'm not going to go all the way down to 46. But this is just a diagram with four chromosomes just to show you. It would be very difficult to show you with 46 actual chromosomes. Recall, this is a chromosome, and each of these is called what? A sister what? Chromatid. A sister chromatid. So each is an exact copy of the other. They line up in the middle, the spindles come from the centriole, and they grab the centromere. Not with four chromosomes, but with actually 46 chromosomes. The next phase of mitosis is called anaphase. I think you can kind of guess what's going to happen here. During metaphase, the uh, chromosomes lined up in the center. The spindles reached out from the the spindles reached out from the centrioles and grabbed the centromeres. Well, what do you think is going to happen next? Well, these spindle fibers are going to yank and pull the sister chromatid apart at the centromere. When they get yanked apart, we don't call that sister chromatid anymore. We call it, again, what it was before, a chromosome. So let's review. First, we have strands of chromatin. Here we go, to the left here. Then they coil up and do a chromosome in prophase, right? Then one chromosome attaches to its, its replication. And then we stop calling that a chromosome. And we call them sister chroma tid. And then this whole unit together, the two of them together, we call a chromosome. So notice during anaphase that these chromatid, sister chromatid, are being ripped apart. The identical copy here and here are being ripped apart. And now we stop calling them chromatids. And we once again call them, each one, we call it a chromosome. Anaphase is over when Anaphase is over when all of the chromosomes are lined up 
on opposite sides of the nucleus. So the centrioles have completely ripped them apart. This is not a sister chromatid anymore. They're their brand own, they're their own person now. They're their own chromosome now. And they've lined up on opposite sides of the nucleus. The final phase of mitosis is called telophase. I think this is another phase where you can guess what's going to happen next. Well, let's look at it. Notice this pinching here in the diagram on the left. Notice the pinching in of the middle of the cell or the middle of the nucleus. So this nucleus is getting ready to divide. Notice that the chromosomes, which were being pulled apart in anaphase, are now completely separated. You see these ones on the left here. Excuse me. These ones on the left are over here now. And these ones on the right are in here. You see. Notice what else begins to occur. Look what's reforming here the membrane of the nucleolus is starting to reform. Look, it had disappeared here, remember? Remember, look up at prophase. Look how during prophase, the membrane of the nucleolus disappeared and broke up. Well, look down in telophase now. Notice how it starts to reappear. Also notice what happens during telophase is that the chromosomes in the center of the nucleolus, watch this, look what starts to happen. It starts to reform back into what? From chromosome back into, up left here, back into chromatin with an N. See, it was coiled nice and tight. Recall, look up here in, uh, interphase, how the chromatin was in strands, and prophase, it coiled up, recall, and became chromosomes. Now, back in telophase, after the nucleus in the cell has split into two daughter cells, that these nicely formed chromosomes start to uncoil back into chromatin. Now, guess what happens next? Each of these daughter cells, which are identical, why are they identical? Because during interphase, if you recall, each strand of chromatin replicated into an exact copy. This strand is over here now, and this strand is over here. Now, guess what happens? Each of these daughter cells goes back to the first phase called interphase. What do they start doing in interphase? Now their strands of chromatin begin to do what? Duplicate. And then of course, they're going to join pro they're, they're going to go into prophase and start to coil up, right? and attach at the center mirror, and the process starts over and over and over again. And this is how cells divide in a process called mitosis.